Tony Rose Morning Show. Hope you guys are having a fantastic morning out there as we get things up and running for you. On this uh, Wednesday, just a couple of short days away from uh, Christmas in the studio with us, our good friends from uh, Heason Coleman, Ms. Lee Coleman. Hey, sir, how you doing? Good to see you again. Tony, I'm great. Thanks for having me again. Merry Christmas to you and, and your family. How are you guys celebrating the holidays so far? Everything going pretty good? Doing the doing the uh, normal of uh, little grandkids running around and their parents, my kids, uh, going crazy trying to <laughs> trying to keep them corralled, and uh, everybody's a little bit stressed, but uh, it's still good. Good, well, good, well, good. That's that's the key thing right there. Enjoy enjoying the holidays, enjoying uh, the holidays. Time of year. That's what it's about. Uh, for so many people out there, travel is going to be a big part of their holiday plans. And this year, of course, no exception to that. People hitting the roads probably more than ever over the last couple of years. A lot of people making up for lost time. Mm-hmm. It's going to be cold out there, so make sure your tires are aired up and you got that extra battery charger and a blanket or something in the trunk there as well if you're going to be traveling. But also December. Is National Impaired Driving Prevention Month. Tell us a little bit about what that, what, what this month is and what kind of awareness that people need to be thinking about and what you guys are encouraging people to be thinking about. I will. And Tony, I'd like to first jump in on, on the weather thing and yeah. the tires. I, I would encourage people to go check your tires. Yeah. I just, when, when the, the, there's a little bit of ice on the road, if you don't have decent tires, you are, you know, you're at risk. Yeah. And I know it's hard. They're, they're expensive. But it's the easiest fix to get safer is to have decent tires. So yeah. go out and check your tires. Maybe buy buy, buy your uh, buy your mom, your dad, your uh, sister, whoever it is, some tires for Christmas if they're if they're running bald. Cause that is da- that is dangerous. That is a very good point. Yeah. And especially when it's we're not expecting a blizzard, but just that little bit of snow and that black ice as they call it. Especially if you're going to be traveling early in the morning. Yeah. That's the ones that will sneak up and get you well, right there. Well, and I, I've got a son who is, I don't know where he gets it from, but he is the most frugal thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and um, um, and I looked at his tires like a year ago, and I said, what in the world are you doing? He yeah. said, well, I know I need to get some. Stuff. No, you need to get some yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so some people, it's just, you know, saving money, whatever. But, yes, uh, get get the tires because we see stuff happen. People hit the brakes, and they they can't stop. So Yeah, and, anyway. and, and then they're calling you guys because – they're in the back end That's of somebody happens, else, yeah. or they're off the side of the road, and whatever it may be. Right. Um, back to back to the national or uh, the the impaired driver awareness. Yeah, um, it's it's something that we see all the time, year round. It does go up during the holidays. I think it's just more parties. You know, yeah. people go to parties that aren't used to going to parties, uh, and they aren't. Some people will go out, and they're they're not used to drinking out, and then they're driving home. They think, "Oh, I'm okay," uh, and they're just not. You know, they're not ready for it. So. Uh, trying to bring awareness uh, of be because to me it's all about planning ahead. Right. It's just all about planning ahead. Um, you know, if you've had too many to drink, then you're not as smart as you are before you start drinking. So. Right. Well, and here's the thing: the world it's easier now than ever. You know, it's, it's not only just designating that driver before you mm-hmm. ever head to the party, but now in the world of Uber and Lyft and so many other options out there, a, a ride home safely is easier and more affordable to get to mm-hmm. than any yeah, case and, before. And, um, you know, maybe maybe think about your good deed for the holidays is keep one person from driving impaired. You yeah. know, if you're out and you see somebody that you know and they're, you know, because it, we'll see people who get obstinate when they drank too much. They, yeah. oh, you're not going to take my keys away. So step up and and do them a favor. Yeah. Uh, they may not thank you for it. Maybe they will later, but. Uh, if that's your good deed for the holidays, you've done something good. What about uh, a situation, because we all see this, too, uh, especially I, we may see it in town as we're heading out to holiday parties. We may see it out on the interstate or the highways. Mm-hmm. We see somebody that's either swerving or driving recklessly or something like that. I never really know the right way to go about reporting something like that. Because, again, I'm driving down the road, too. Do I call 911? Who, what do I do if I see somebody or I, I suspect something's going on on the road? Roadways. Uh, where somebody's maybe had too much or they're driving out of control. I think you absolutely call 911. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, 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 a two to 5,000 pound vehicle with a drunk driver behind the wheel That's a is, missile. is, it's a missile. It's dangerous. Yeah. So uh, call 911. They, in most jurisdictions, they will respond to that. They're going to need information. They're going to need, you know, a, a gray uh, Cadillac, you know, right. two door headed south on 65 at the 22 mile mark or whatever it might be that you can give that information because they can then dispatch to somebody who's closest to where they're going and and see. Um, You know, I I remember going down the road not too long ago and there's some sort of, 
um, some sort of log just in the middle of the interstate. Yeah. And uh, you call it in, and they just want to know where you know where to go because they'll right. send somebody out to take care of it, but they got to know where to go. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Don't feel Absolutely bad not. about now, doing it. They yeah. they will they they will ask you your name. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what will happen if you say you want to be anonymous, but you can try. Mm-hmm. But um, you know they may they may want to know who's calling. Yeah. Uh, but to me, it's just doing the right thing. Yeah. Uh, what if you're in a fender bender of some kind, like uh, during the holidays, especially uh, if you if if you're out. And, and you're coming home from work or whatever it may be, and somebody who is under the influence uh, rear ends you or T-bones you or something like that. Obviously, it's it's an accident like any other accident, but how do the rules change in, in, in the world of reporting that and getting the making sure that they're taken care of, or making sure that if you're the victim of something like that, that you're taken care of the right way? How do you consult people in that? I think the sequence of, of events is going to be you're going to get hit, you're going to call, you know, call, call it in, 911, whatever, and then before the officers get there, you're going to have some interaction with the other driver, and then you're going to start saying, well, wait a minute, you know, the whatever. Right. So I, I think it starts once you start seeing the information, uh, evidence, beer cans on the on the floor, odor. slurred speech, yeah. odor, whatever it is, then when that officer shows up, you need to give them that information and Make sure they're making a note of it. Right. Most of the time they will because uh, drunk driving, impaired driving is a big deal with officers. Right. Uh, but, you know, sometimes they just get in a hurry, and if they don't really hear you and don't really make a note of it, they might just report it as a fender bender. But I think giving that information to the officers, what you've seen, uh, what you've smelled, what you've heard. You, you, it's, so you, it's okay to, to share that information with that police officer, like, right off the bat. I mean, whether you pull them aside and you say it or whatever it may be, it's like, hey, I think – they may have been under the influence or maybe under the influence. You're not you're not overstepping your bounds by reporting that. If it were me knowing what I know after yeah. all these years, I would start out and tell the officer, said, look, they hit me from behind. And I'll tell you about that. Before I go in the details of what they did, I want to tell you that after I got out of the car, I saw boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And, you know, they may be on on something, whatever. Right. And then make sure they make a note of that and then say, okay, now I want to tell you what happened because you still want to make sure they get a record of the events that you were stopped in traffic, you got hit, whatever that is. But I'm a big believer in when you start to tell somebody, tell them up front what they're getting ready to hear right? because then they'll listen for it. If, you know, my wife will send me text messages and the important thing is online 42, then when I get home... (laughs) When I get home and she's mad at me, I pull that out and say, you know, don't put the important stuff yeah, on line yeah. 42. Lead with the headline, right? Lead, the headline, lead, yeah. lead with what you yeah. really want me to know. Yeah. So, uh, Key things before I let you get out of here. If, again, takeaways from this whole thing, though. Uh, hey, in cold weather like this, uh, if you're going to be traveling, pack and check your vehicle accordingly before you ever pull out of the driveway, right? Absolutely. Uh, tires, extra blanket, maybe a battery charger, whatever it may be in the back seat there. And then the big thing, too, is... Um, if you're going to be going to those holiday parties or family get-togethers, designate that driver or plan on staying, right? And plan ahead. Just plan ahead, yeah. and you'll generally be okay. Everybody's got a cell phone now. So if, yeah. if you decide, well, I'm going to drink more, then call somebody and say, hey, yeah. you know, I don't think I need to be driving. Can you pick me up in an hour? Heck, at, at, well, an Uber is only going to cost you a few bucks. And my goodness, what's a DUI running somebody nowadays? I I, there's still you know? a, a lot of people out there that don't ever use Uber. So Uber no. might be fine for someone who uses a lot. Yeah. There's still a lot of people that have never done an Uber. They don't have it on. But everybody's got a cell phone. So yeah. whether it's Uber, calling a friend, uh, but don't wait until 2 in the morning and say, well, now I can't call somebody. Of course yeah. you can't, you know, but plan ahead. Yeah. Uh, good to see you as always. Appreciate our friends at Hughes and Coleman. Always looking out for you as well. You can find them online at uh, their website, of course, social media as well. Uh, across many, many platforms there uh, with our friends from Hughes and Coleman. Uh, Lee, good seeing you, buddy, as always. And uh, have a good holiday, good Christmas, a good New Year. And uh, appreciate all you guys do heading into 2023 and beyond, my friend. Appreciate it, Tony. Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, buddy. Good to see you. Thank you guys very, very much.